Hello everyone, my name is Trevor, I go by the Mr. Trails, and welcome to the channel. So today's video is just supposed to be me mathematically proving that zeal is just plain old garbage. But since I was already doing calculations for all of the other DPS utility cells, I decided I would just make this video into a DPS utility cell ranking. So why do we care so much about DPS? Dauntless has pretty much made itself into a speed game, which once you've made it through all of the endgame content, all you really have left is a rotating weekly reset of a hard behemoth. So a lot of what people tend to do in the game is to try and beat the behemoths as fast as they possibly can. And building with beating the behemoths as fast as you possibly can in mind will also help you when you are still trying to grind out some stuff. Sustained damage that is always available to you is what we want to see when we are going for fast kill times. What this video was originally supposed to be about, the zeal cell, is phenomenal at getting the highest momentary damage possible. But the innate issue with the cell comes from the lantern taps being available for only a few seconds. And during the cooldown period between the end of the duration and the start of the next lantern tap, it is a dead cell. But it is good for going for the highest single damage hits possible, as well as getting the highest momentary attack speed possible. But let's go ahead and hop into this comparison between the utility cells that do increase your DPS. The following cells will not be featured in this video as they do not contribute to DPS. Aetherborn, Medic, Engineer, Mender, Stunning Vigor, and Vampiric. I am also not going to be featuring the Lucent cell as getting its DPS increase is rather difficult, at least to get this DPS increase efficiently, as well as there isn't really going to be a mathematic proof behind energized, and the only reason I'm even featuring it in the video is because it's actually good on sword these days. So, the utility cells we are considering are Etheric Attunement, Etheric Frenzy, Catalyst, Conduit, Energized, and Zeal. The final rankings are going to come down to what provides us the highest average DPS. So we're going to start with an easy cell to talk about, Conduit. At plus 3, Conduit is 8% attack speed and 15% at plus 6, and in a good fight, Conduit can be upheld for the entire duration. So we can say that the average attack speed increase for the duration of the fight would be still the 8% and the 15% that it states. The catalyst cell will add multiple variables to the DPS equation, and which ones it adds entirely depends on what you choose to use for your potions. If we take the potions that will provide for us the maximum DPS increase possible, at plus 3, we'll add 30% Lantern Generation, 4.5% Permanent Damage, 4.5% Conditional Damage, and 3% Attack Speed. At plus 6, all numbers double, so 60% Lantern Generation, 9% Permanent Damage, 9% Conditional Damage, and 6% Attack Speed. As I explained in my Malfunctioning Equipment video, Catalyst doesn't affect the speed stacks from the Blitz Tonic, making the max attack speed you gain from Catalyst plus 6, 6%, affecting only the base 10% attack speed from the tonic. Catalyst would also add conditional and permanent damage from the frenzy tonics, the conditional damage coming from whenever the behemoth enrages. With good gameplay, heroic level and lower behemoths will not enrage, making this conditional increase impossible. We'll do further analysis when we convert these into DPS with no enrage boost and with an enrage boost active for about half of the fight. And for lantern generation, we'll have to treat it as an attack speed increase for the specific lantern when looking to convert those to DPS. But with that being said, we can already prematurely rank Catalyst above Etheric Attunement just on the lantern generation alone. Catalyst adds 60% lantern generation to Etheric Attunement's 50%, and that's not even considering the fact that Catalyst is also adding attack speed and damage along the way. We can also take a look at Etheric Attunement versus Etheric Frenzy, and we can actually make this a general percent damage versus flat increase argument. The less damage you deal, the more appealing flat damage increases are. So as general information, it takes 1000 lantern charge to generate a lantern hold. As a base, around 5000 damage is needed for a lantern charge, meaning we're given 5 damage per lantern charge. Using this, I sleuthed out that dealing at least 140 damage on a hit means for that hit, a 50% increase to lantern generation would be better than the 12.5 flat lantern charge that Etheric Frenzy plus 
6 provides. And since you will rarely do less than 140 damage with a good build, Etheric Attunement can be deemed better. We'll come back to our issue of translating Lantern Charge to average DPS once we talk about Zeal. To get Zeal's average damage or attack speed increase, we'd need to take the increase it gives for Drask or Embermane Lantern and multiply it by the duration of the Lantern over the Lantern cooldown. The increase for Drask Lantern is the 30% damage times 0.65, which is 19.5. For Embermane Lantern, it is 25% attack speed times 65%, giving us 16.25%. So again, to get the average damage or attack speed increase, we have to take into account the Lantern Tap cooldown. So for the Drask Lantern, we have to take this 19.5% and multiply it by 6 over 30, giving us 3.9% average damage addition. And for the Embermane Lantern, we take the 16.25% and multiply it by 8 over 30 to give us 4.33 average attack speed increase. But going on our average attack speed game from Zeal, it would rank below Conduit and Catalyst, and it would also rank below Catalyst for our average damage gain. In almost every case, that 19.5% damage or 16.25% attack speed increase from 6 Zeal is going to be overshadowed by an increase that is active for the whole fight. Basically, the fight will have to last a very short amount of time for Zeal to be a significantly better sell choice, as is the point for using it in one-shot shock escalation builds. So perhaps, since we now have an individual category ranking for each of the five cells and their increases, perhaps we can try to convert these to affecting DPS. We can create an example situation in which we deal 10,000 damage in 10 seconds as a common ground before considering these cell additions. With Conduit's 15% attack speed boost, our 10,000 damage would then be done in 8.696 seconds which means that it has increased our DPS from 1,000 to 1,149.954. If you're astute, you might wonder what I will do with the Embermane Lantern for these 10 seconds. And you might be shocked to know it doesn't really matter what I do with it. Conduit would add 15% attack speed for the whole 10 seconds versus if we took the 16.25% added from Zeal and then even allowed Zeal all 8 seconds of the Lantern duration, it would still not match the average attack speed increase. The the average attack speed added would only be 13% in this case, which would still make Conduit better. So in that case, we would have 1,129.995 as our new DPS. But if we treat these 10 seconds as a snapshot of the fight where our average attack speed increase would be 4.33%, our 10,000 damage would be dealt in 9.585 seconds, going from the 1,000 base DPS to an underwhelming 1,043 DPS. And we can do the same for the Drask Lantern. If we took the 6 seconds duration as all 6 seconds being a part of this 10 seconds, we'd have the average damage increase be 11.7%. This would give us 1,117 DPS. If we took it as the average throughout the fight, we would get 1,039 DPS at Zeal plus 6 for Drask Tap. Through a similar process, we can figure out exactly how Catalyst is helping us. Our 10,000 damage is done in 9.4340 seconds, but is no longer 10,000 damage, but 10,900 damage if we don't have the Enrage bonus. This would yield 1155 DPS, better than Conduit already, even without the Enrage bonus. Let's say we have the Enrage bonus for half of our fight, allowing us to say it's active for 5 seconds in this snapshot. We would then get a 1203.0. 095 DPS. Be assured that this is only what Catalyst itself is adding, assuming all potential builds were already using potions. Our current rankings then are Catalyst, Conduit, then Zeal for overall DPS contributions. And Catalyst is still yet to receive that juicy Lantern Generation bonus. With 10,000 damage over the course of 10 seconds base, our player was able to use their Lantern Hold twice, or four times if they are using the Aether Drive Tonic. With Etheric Attunement, we could get exactly one more Lantern Hold in. I will admit that this next conversion to DPS now isn't 100% scientific and may be rather flawed. But with a build doing close to our arbitrary 1000 DPS, the hold cast of the Pangar Lantern does 1076 damage. We can get more damage from the Drask Lantern depending on the Behemoth, but we'll use Pangar since it's more consistent. So with an extra 1076 damage in the 10 second time frame, Etheric Attunement plus 6 would bring the 1000 DPS up to 1107.6 DPS. 
Since we get an extra 10% generation when using Catalyst, we would get to this extra Lantern Hold faster, but it wouldn't be enough to grant an additional hold. Since 10% is 1 -fifth of 50%, we can conclude that the 60% generation would contribute 1.25 times the 50% generation. This would be 1,291.2 damage, which we will add to all of the damage output Catalyst has done already, and we'll get 1,292.262 DPS. But that's when we have no enrage buff because with the enrage bonus active 50% of the fight we would get 1339.962 dps which means we can now rank ourselves catalyst comes out on top by a pretty large margin with conduit being in second followed by etheric attunement and then zeal but we still need a way to work in etheric frenzy and energized into this situation etheric frenzy's dps additions are going to depend on how many hits are going to go on during the time frame with a weapon like Chain Blades, we could fit in somewhere around 48 hits in these 10 seconds. This would be enough for Etheric Frenzy to add 60% of a Lantern Charge, meaning that we can say it would add about 60% of the Lantern's damage to our overall DPS. This would mean 1,064.56 DPS on Chain Blades. On a slower weapon like Hammer, we would only get in about 18 hits in these 10 seconds, 22.5% of a Lantern Charge being from Etheric Frenzy, giving us 1,020. 24.21 DPS from Etheric Frenzy on Hammer. So in some cases, even Etheric Frenzy would be better than Zeal. One last cell we need to fit in is Energized. For Hammer, Repeaters and Strikers, Energized has no effect, so it will be at the bottom for these. For Sword, it will be close to the top, which I will explain shortly. On Warpikes and Axe, it will have a downside, as for these weapons, we don't even really want to use our specials if we don't have to. I thought there might have been a legitimate case for Energized on Boreas Chain Blades, but the dummy DPS said no. And I'm not even going to begin to do calculations on how Special Meter affects your DPS. But the case for Energized being on Sword now is that that it allows you to stay in special for longer, making it a nice DPS boost compared to other weapons. It actually makes it optimized on a 6 utility build to have 3 Energized and either 3 Conduit or 3 Catalyst or 3 Etheric Attunement depending on the situation. So if I had to give an overall ranking of all of the DPS utility cells, what would be the order? Catalyst is on top, followed by Conduit, Etheric Attunement, Zeal, Etheric Frenzy, then Energized for my general analysis of running them at plus 6 on on Hammer, Strikers, and Repeaters. For Axe, Energized would overtake Etheric Frenzy as it's a slow enough weapon. For Chain Blades, aside from Boreas and Warpike, Etheric Frenzy would overtake Zeal with Energized still at the bottom. For Boreas Chain Blades, Catalyst is on top, Zeal and Conduit are about Tide, Etheric Attunement, Energized, and Etheric Frenzy. And for Swords, Catalyst on top, Conduit and Energized are about Tied, Etheric Attunement, Zeal, and Etheric Frenzy. If you enjoyed this comprehensive analysis, of the utility cells in Dauntless, consider liking the video. This video was a bit much math, even for my taste, so I congratulate those of you who made it to the end. If you enjoy Dauntless content, consider subscribing to the channel. Here I post Dauntless content every week. My name is Trevor, I go by the Mr. Trails, and I will catch you guys next time.